That's enough. Ah! My husband looked furious and suddenly poured beer on me. Don't get too cocky when you're the one who gets to live a nice life, all thanks to me. All you have to do is shut up and cook. I can't stand it anymore. I can't stay with this man after being treated like this. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. When I said that, my husband instantly changed his attitude. Oh, no, no, p please don't do that. Actually, my husband had to deal with some situation on his own. But it doesn't matter to me anymore, and it's none of my business. You can go straight to hell. My name is Francine. I am a 34-year-old office worker. My husband Wally and I have been married for almost four years. We met at a blind date. My husband is an office worker working for a major company. He was one year younger than me, so we were almost of the same age, and the conditions he had were perfect. And when we sat next to each other and talked, we had a lot of fun and I was instantly attracted to him. We then exchanged contact information and started meeting just with the two of us. We went out for drinks after work, went on dates on our days off, and grew closer. Soon, we started to officially go out and were a happy couple. It was about a year into our relationship when we got married. Just as I was about to celebrate my 30th birthday, Wally proposed to me. I want your last memory of your 20s to be a proposal from me. Francine, please marry me. Yes, I can't wait to get married to you, Wally. I was beyond happy. And so like this, that was how we got married. Married life with Wally was very enjoyable, and I was happy. However, there was one thing that surprised me a little. My husband was extremely a frugal person. We will live with less than $2,000 a month, which includes the rent as a married couple. My husband said something like that the moment we got married. And then he proceeded to live a frugal life more and more. For the time being, we'll live in this apartment's room. He showed me a page of an apartment room from the real estates he found on the internet. It was a one room with dining room and kitchen for $750 per month for rent. I thought it was a bit small for a married couple like us, but after hearing my husband say that he would prefer to have lower fixed costs, I thought that was true. So I agreed to his proposal. When I went to go look at the rooms, it looked surprisingly easy to live in, so I had no issues with it. Then my husband said that we both should contribute $500 for living expenses. The rent was also split 50-50, so we were paying about $900 per person. The rest of the money we both save and spend on hobbies and things we each want. My husband works for a major company and his income is much better than mine. And yet, I thought it was great that he was trying to save money that way. I am also thankful that if the amount I pay is about $900, I have a good amount of money for my savings or for my hobbies. I am not the type of person who is that greedy to begin with, and I was saving for our future life as a couple. My husband saves a lot more than I do, since he hardly buys anything new, and he seems to be working hard to save money. He works for a major company, is kind, good-looking, and frugal, which is impeccable. I thought I got married to a very nice, kind man. But there was one thing that bothered me a little. My husband would not open a joint account for us as a married couple. Well, it's fine if we don't do that, but if we are both working hard to save money, I think it would be better if we could visualize that we are saving money together by putting it in the same account. This could also motivate us to maybe save even more, because then maybe we can think that we can finally dream of buying a house and owning our own home in the future. Well, that's what I at least think. But when I tell my husband about it, he always brushes it off. If we set up a joint account, and if something happens in the future, and one of us is unable to put money into the account, 
It would be a hassle for the one who would end up always putting the money in the account. Don't you think so? I think it's better to keep the money separated in such a way that both of us are independent on their own. Uh, oh, you, you think so? If that's what you want, then I wouldn't mind, I guess. If my husband is not willing to do it, I don't want to force him to do it. From then on, I accepted the lifestyle of not having a joint account as a couple, and we lived peacefully and had some calm days as a couple. I still spent some days where I wouldn't use my money at all, and I would occasionally go out to dinner with some friends and splurging a bit when buying gifts for my parents. My husband still seems to live frugally, and so after a few years of marriage, we have rarely gone on trips or anything like that. On his days off, Wally would generally stay at home or my husband goes out with friends, but he says that they just go out for drinks at inexpensive popular bars and even if he goes there, he wouldn't spend much money. My husband is very busy with his work and has to go on business trips over weekends every month, so he doesn't have much time to hang out with his friends a lot. And so, four years have passed in our marriage. We have no children, so there is no particular change in our lives. It's not that I was being unsatisfied of our married life, but I was beginning to wonder if we were just living together rather than being a married couple. It sounds nice to say that we were living independently, together, but it didn't feel like we were living as a couple, and it felt more like we were sharing a room together or something like that. I wondered if my husband really loved me. I began to worry about that too. Then one day, my husband says something like this. I'm thinking of saving money to build our own home for the future. What? Really? I was happy that my husband said that. I thought he was thinking for the both of us. So, I'd like you to put more money into the monthly living expenses a little more. I understand. Then let's set up a couple's account like we're going to build our own home. When I said that, my husband said, No, we don't have to do that. What? But why not? Wouldn't it be easier that way? Don't worry. I'll take care of the family finances. Then I can save more money if I get the money from you, Francine, in cash, and I'll take care of everything. Uh, oh, r really? My husband is certainly a frugal man, but why is he so stubbornly unwilling to set up a joint account with me? I'll help you with the family finances as much as I can too, but... No, it gets messy and confusing when two people try to do it together. I'll get the money from you, Francine, and I'll give you the money for food and stuff from here. Uh, okay, if you say so. I felt a little uncomfortable about Wally's proposal, but... I decided to follow his idea, and I started to give him about $500 more every month than I did before. According to my husband's calculations, we would put about $1,500 each, and out of the $3,000, we would pay for the living expenses including rent, and put about $1,700 to $1,800 into savings for building our own home. I was really surprised to hear his idea. If we take out the rent, we'll have about $400 to $500 to put into living expenses. We will have to pay for food, utilities, and daily necessities from there, which means we will have to save a lot of money. In fact, my husband only gave me $250 for food for the whole month. With such a small amount of money, it is quite difficult to make a full daily meal for two people. But my husband is working hard to save money so that we can build our own home, so I must work hard too. With this in mind, I desperately try to plan out new ways to cook. I used bean sprouts and tofu to add to meat dishes and bought discounted foods and froze them immediately and tried to save money on food costs. I thought to myself that I was making a lot of effort, but my husband gradually began to complain about the meals I have been cooking recently. Hey, lately, the meals you make always 
seems to be really bland. When he complained about this, I was a little offended. Well, that's because the amount of money you give me for our meals is quite small, so I can't help it. I'm trying my best, you know. When I said this, my husband's eyes widened, and he became angry. Why are you being so cross with me? I'm saving money for our own home, you know? Even if that's the case, we're going to have to spend a little more on food. Or else, we'll end up eating meals like this all the time. Oh, don't be such a crybaby. I've given you enough money, haven't I? You just have to work it out. I won't increase the food budget from $250. End of discussion. You're the one who has to make the meals in a way that I'd be satisfied with. Wow, this was just too much. Why would he say such outrageous things? But my husband stubbornly refused to increase our food budget. So, I had no choice but to add about $100 from my own income and increase the food budget myself to make ends meet. I knew that if I did not do this, our food situation would become worse and worse. My husband wanted us to cut back on food, but he wanted to drink on the weekends, so he always made me buy beer for him. I thought we could save a little more money if we didn't have that, but I knew that my husband would lose his temper unreasonably if I said that, considering how he was during our last fight. So, I didn't have the courage to tell him. And at that time, I still loved and had affection for my husband. So I wanted to make an effort and, if possible, bring things back to the way my husband wanted them to be. However, my thoughts were shattered in an instant. On that day, I had been asked by the person in charge to deliver materials at work. The person in charge had forgotten the material and gone to a client's office, so he called the company in a hurry and someone was assigned to bring it there. And I happened to be available, so I said I would go myself and got in the company car and headed off. On the way there, while waiting at a traffic light, I spotted my husband in town. He was walking with a woman, and the woman was clinging onto my husband's arm in broad daylight. I could not believe my eyes. The woman was an employee where she worked in the same company as my husband, and she was clearly younger, and I was sure she had been at our wedding. Why did they look so close to each other? It was strange to see them clinging onto each other like that. I began to think that Wally was having an affair with that woman. Then I wondered if everything Wally had done up to that point had been for that woman. The unusual frugality and even more so Wally's recent words and actions. I think he may have been having an affair and wanted the money to spend for himself and for his mistress, which is why he didn't set up a shared account with me. I don't have any proof yet, but if that's the case, then that's just horrible. It would mean that my husband is limiting his life with me and using the money to have a good time with the woman with whom he is having the affair with. The lights changed and I had to continue driving, but my husband and that woman had their hands on the door of a fancy restaurant. It was lunchtime, which probably means they went to that restaurant for lunch. He wanted me to save money on food, and yet he was the one at the fancy restaurant spending money to eat those fancy meals. I was just filled with anger. And it was at that moment that my feelings for my husband was completely gone. I then asked the investigators to investigate and find out if my husband was having an affair. If he was having an affair, I would divorce him. I was determined to do so. And when the results of the investigation came out, I went to get them. As a result, my husband did have an affair behind my back. He was having an affair with that woman. Moreover, as a result of the detailed investigation, there was information that they had been together before we even got married. In other words, they had been having an affair for more than four years. And now, knowing that fact, I could not forgive my husband. I wanted to beat him up right now, but that would put me at a disadvantage. 
I decided to calmly make various preparations. First, I consulted a lawyer, prepared to get alimony, and then went to a real estate agency to look for a room to live on my own. But when I was somewhat ready, I had an argument with my husband. This was all triggered by none other than my husband. Don't you think your cooking is getting bland again? Come on, don't serve the same side dishes as yesterday. My husband started complaining to me just like that about the meals again. I had no affection for him anymore, so I coldly argued back. You're the one not providing enough money for food, so it's no wonder, don't you think? It's your fault that you don't try to increase our food budget. When I said this, my husband stood up with his eyes wide open. Then he took me by surprise. That's enough. Ah! My husband looked furious and suddenly poured beer all over me. Don't get too cocky when you're the one who gets to live a nice life, all thanks to me. All you have to do is shut up and cook. I can't stand it anymore. I can't stay with this man after being treated like this. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. What? You're leaving? Yeah, I can't live with a lousy, scumbag man like you. I said that to Wally while getting a towel and wiping my face with the beer. My husband was clearly upset as if he didn't think I was actually going to leave. D don't be so stupid. You are my wife. You're supposed to stay at home, do your chores, and contribute financially to the family. My husband is pushing his own selfish logic onto me. What the hell are you talking about? That's your selfish point of view, isn't it? I mean, I'm planning to divorce you anyways. D divorce me? Now wait a minute. Why are you saying something so outrageous and completely unrelated to what we were discussing here? Well, that's because you're having an affair. What? N no, I'm not. I even have proof, you know. I showed my husband the photo evidence I had obtained from the investigation. See, this is the proof that you are having an affair. I will divorce you and have you and your mistress pay alimony to me. When I said this, my husband immediately changed his attitude. What? N no, please don't. My husband was extremely upset. Actually, my husband had to deal with some situation on his own. Wally's mistress was, in fact, pregnant. As a result of the investigation, I found out that my husband had gotten that woman pregnant. I guess that's why he needed the money, and that's why he was being extra frugal lately. But it doesn't matter to me anymore. I don't care if you need money or not. After all, your life with me was for stability, free money, and to make a good public impression, wasn't it? I got a hold of your colleague and asked him about you, actually. Excuse me? And I found out that actually, you've been romantically involved with your colleague who's younger than you for a long time. But it seems like you were talking about marrying a woman who would obediently abide by your rules because you had to get married in order to get ahead in life with promotions and whatnot. And I was the one who fell on your trap, right? I really do feel like a complete idiot. So now that I know the truth, I'll take what I can get from you. And you can go straight to hell. No, no way. My husband was frozen, looking completely pale. While I saw my husband being like that, I packed up my belongings and went back to my parents' house for the time being. After that, I demanded alimony from my husband and the woman with whom he was having an affair with. I had sent content certificates to their workplaces and my husband's parents' home so that people around them knew about the affair. During the four-year period of the affair, Wally's behavior was judged to be malicious and the alimony was much higher than the normal rate because the marriage had been entered into on the assumption that the affair would continue from the beginning. As a result, I was able to claim $100,000 in alimony from my husband and $50,000 from his mistress. And because my lawyer was excellent, I got no division of property, so the money I had saved on my own did not go to my husband at all. After the divorce, my ex-husband and his mistress were saddled with a large amount of debt. My ex-husband was not frugal, but he had saved money from his marriage to me and the rest of the money he had saved had been spent lavishly with his mistress, and he had no savings at all. 
And because of this incident, my ex husband was demoted and he had to leave for a rural department in a local area. Wally's mistress decided that it was impossible for her to have a child on her own with the distance between them, so she had no choice but to quit her job and follow Wally. Later, I heard from one of my ex husband's co workers that the ex husband's mistress was having a very difficult time making ends meet while paying alimony, living expenses, and childcare costs. Now they both work double shifts, and they are both a wreck, both physically and mentally. But it's all their own fault, and they deserve what they got. I am working through my lawyer to have their wages garnished mercilessly if they fail to pay their alimony on time. So they will have to spend the rest of their lives paying me alimony. Meanwhile, I have been investing my savings into investments and increasing my assets. Perhaps because of my husband, I have developed the habit of saving money, even if unintentionally, and I have saved up a lot, which is making my life a whole lot easier. I have been thinking recently that I would like to continue to increase my savings without changing my standard of living and eventually retire a little earlier than usual. It is just terrible that Wally continued a relationship after marriage with someone he had been in a relationship with for quite some time. This is something like a marriage fraud. I hope guys like him would go to hell. I am glad that Francine was able to claim a large amount of alimony without having any loss. I hope Francine will find a wonderful man this time and find happiness. Thank you for watching to the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you like. See you in the next video.